So good morning, everyone. My name is Dan Owen. Um, I sit in the office of the CTO at Mulesoft, and I also run the customer success um, architecture team across APAC. So I have the great privilege of working with a lot of our customers um, across multiple industries and multiple um, challenges. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, connected customer experiences uh, leveraging the Mulesoft Anypoint platform, and also dig into a customer story uh, with iCare, um, obviously a customer of ours from here in Sydney and New South Wales. You'll see this slide a couple of times today. Um, I'm obligated to show it to you. Obviously, all purchasing decisions should be based off products available in market today. You'll be pleased to know everything I'm talking about today is in market. So we all know, and today you'll hear this messaging a lot, that customers are expecting that connected experience. Um, we expect it in our day-to-day -day personal lives, and we also expect it um, in our business, um, business day, professional days. Um, but we need to identify who customers are. Customers can be direct consumers, but customers can also be organizations. Um, we recently came across a statistic that 80% of B2B buyers are now expecting real-time transactions. They're looking to work with suppliers in local and global markets and have purchasing decisions um, transacted in real time and not in old-fashioned batch processing using intermediaries. Um, and really what's at the core of real-time transactions is the connectivity um, and connectivity across a number of systems. It's, you're going to see across the Salesforce platform and across digital channels, you know, a lot of diagrams like this that show lots of omni-channel experiences for customers. But actually orchestrating what's behind them is a challenge, and, and that is where MuleSoft and, and integration comes in. So from the outside, it looks good. It puts the customer first, but how do we do it? And how do we get customers with a seamless connected experience? If we consider the customer journey and we consider multiple channels, then by product and by channels, and sometimes even by geography, geographies. Disparate teams across organizations are trying to build connected experiences. Um, and this is building um, disconnected experiences in organizations. Fundamentally, that's slowing down delivery and creating lots of um, expense. What really underpins this example? Is it the order management system? Is it the point of sale system? Or is it even the warehouse system? It's not, it's not that sequence of uh, process, but it's the connectivity across lots of systems. So we at MuleSoft try to achieve um, system connectivity, as you heard it, uh, earlier today from Bill with our platform, um, to create seamless experiences, both for consumers and business-to-business -business use cases. If we actually dig in and look at this example, there's three channels here, web, mobile, and, and physical store, uh, which is quite common. Um, and we look across here, we can see in each channel, similar um, business activities across marketing, merchandising, operations, um, inventory management, and reporting. And what we're depicting here is in many organizations, we see each of these functions being replicated to, su to support and um, execute each channel. So you can see the duplication that's happening. We at MuleSoft believe that each of these um, business processes should be exposed as an API. An API is the modern building block for connectivity. And so it can be reused across these um, channels. Uh, those that did the session before uh, that my colleague Bill presented, he showed a really nice system process experience level architecture. And really in my role, I stand with a lot of customers in front of whiteboards, and we look at these business kind of descriptions, and we re-architect that into the system process experience level approach. And at some stage in that process, the penny drops with customers, and they see how they can actually write a common core service. It might be around channel operations, it might be around inventory management, and then we use that across the channels. And then they see the reuse really does drive acceleration. By building the silos, we're really, in an organization, building data and process silos, which is causing fragmented um, solutions in organizations. Um, Ghana is a statistic we use quite frequently, but they say today a business transaction touches, on average, 35 systems. Um, who here has 35 systems in their organization? Who has over 100? Ghana say organizations now have over 1,000 1, applications in their organization. So I can see, I can only expect this 35 number to grow maybe this year to 45 and, and above. So it's going to get more and more complicated. And it's creating data silos in organization or data duplication. And this creates challenges. Um, also, as organizations evolve, systems are being replaced uh, due to business need or technology need. And this challenge just gets more complicated and complicated. The other challenge we see in customers is this is often approached in a project-based manner. So a project will come along to implement a new system or replace a system, and we'll consider the scope of that project. Um, a greater and greater proportion of these project budgets have been spent on integration. 
whether that's looking back and picking up on past integrations, understanding what was done, understanding just where the connection points are in the organization, so not to break anything, or actually repiping new integrations to channels or applications or devices. It's a greater and greater proportion of project budgets. Not to, not to um, overlook the actual testing and coordination uh, across 35 systems or more. We hear more and more that this pain is actually being felt at the executive level. Uh, recent quote given to one of my colleagues in the US recently, the CIO JetBlue, he now jokes that he calls himself the chief integration officer. More and more of his day, more and more of his portfolio is spent dealing with integration. Whether it's integration not working, integration spent on projects, or just business owners saying, I can't get what I want because I can't connect to application and devices. We understand about $700 billion a year is spent on integration. It's a big number. Yet only 32 billion of that is actually spent on integration software. Over $400 billion a year, um, we've learned, is spent on actual system integrated partners implementing integration for projects. Um, and another $250 billion spent internally on custom code or internal support for integration. So there's a huge opportunity for improvement there, which we hope to be able to help with. So how do we look to fix this? Um, I want to take you through today a customer case study. Um, iCare's been on a three-year journey. Is anyone aware of who iCare is today? A couple of mules, that doesn't count. So, not too many. Um, so iCare's been on a three-year journey, and I've had the good fortune to work with them for the past two years. Um, so iCare, for those that don't know, provide worker, workers' compensation insurance um, in the New South Wales state. Um, and it's to cover both insurance, to cover wages at the time of injury, but more critically to uh, put workers into medical recovery programs to get them back to work. They're fundamentally there to get back to work. I can have a, a range of consumers, as we talked about first, uh, customers. They have a direct relationship with employers. Employers are regulated in the state to have workers' compensation insurance, so they need B2B channels to, to serve that. They also have intermediaries working on behalf of employers um, as well, and also direct the workers themselves. They can use the portal to access their insurance, make claims, and see the progress of claims. So I can need to service all those channels. And as the slogan says here, I care is for workers. Literally, up and down the organization, I care is at the heart of the organization. And if you ever do meet an I care uh, employee today, ask to see their business card. It's actually one of the best ones um, I've seen for a while, it'll say, you know, Dan Owen and I care. So it's really at the heart. And that's about getting the workers back to, into employment, not necessarily just processing policies and claims. When I care started just over three years ago now, they actually realized it, it's not that the system was ever implemented wrong. Just the, the system of insurance is fundamentally broken. Um, the, the model was about raising policy and issuing policy and processing claims retrospectively. And this, was, and this is really the case for all types of insurance um, and all companies provide insurance. It's just the way it is. Um, the insurance industry for many, many years um, has had the same aspirations as, as they have do now. You know, they, want to be more, they want to be convenient to consumers. They want to be faster service. Obviously, they want to provide the most personal service they can. And also, at the, you know, it says low cost here, but an effective cost to the risk that they're insuring against. Um, but the customer experience itself has not changed. At the beginning of the 20th century, you used to fill out a form, maybe not with a biro, with some more um, ink type pen. And even in you know, today's era, it's still about filling forms in. We've probably all gone through this process of going for insurance, filling a form out for the policy, and then in the event of needing to claim, you fill out another form. It's just the way the system's set up. But I care have as a fundamental principle a need to serve the workers of New South Wales. And this is a really, in a, in a way, scary statistic, but really important. After 45 days of being off work through injury, the rate, the chances of returning to work ever drops below 50%. 45 days is not a long time. That's just over six weeks. So it's very critical that this system gets on top of the injury and provides for the, the injured worker quickly. Being off work obviously create, can create financial pressure at home and stresses at home that aren't going to be conducive to returning to work. So getting the financial support and the medical care you need quickly is of greatest importance to insurance. So how have iCare looked to approach this? Their strategy is across three pillars. They want to be a person-centric organization. More specifically, they want to be a worker-centric organization. 
And really, they want to be an injured worker-centric organization. It's about focusing on the injured workers and returning them to work. They want to provide that ultimate, uh, the optimal customer experience, you know, and they're looking at, they're using digital channels to provide that, both for the partners in terms of employers and intermediaries and also for injured workers as customers. And of course, they need to do this in a financially stable way. They can't over-service a certain um, portfolio of customers and therefore drive up the premiums for everyone else. They've got to do it in a balanced way. Um, and to do this, I care of, you know, made decisions to first insource the insurance. So the previous uh, system in New South Wales was to use third parties. So they've insourced that and they run the insurance themselves. Of course, they've developed an omnichannel experience, just the era of, of creation. But critical to iCare's strategy um, is the, the platform they've put in. And, and this graphic obviously isn't readable on this slide, but it's to provide efficient systems that use um, evidence-based medicine to create um, a risk matrix and then machine learning to process claims, to actually automate claims when they can and to direct the resources uh, to where uh, they're most of value because it's about the injured worker centricity. It's not about necessarily just selling policies and processing claims. So let's just have a little history lesson. So back in 2015, ICAS uh, began their three year journey to create the nominal insurer single platform, which was to provide a centralized technology platform for iCare. Obviously to do issuance of policies, yes to process claims, but also to be on top of treating injured workers. The platform covers customer relationships, Obviously, being at the Salesforce conference today, Salesforce was the system they chose. Um, they went with um, an insurance-based solution, and also, of course, they had payment and financial requirements for outbound payments. Uh, but critically to their strategy was the data-driven insights uh, and also the decision-making engine that they, they acquired. IKE also had a, a technology strategy as well, which was wherever possible to use software as a service. Where software as a service was not available, than to use platform as a service, namely AWS. Um, they pushed Guidewire, their insurance solution, uh, to, to stand up their software as a service, and iCare's actually been the second con customer globally to draw down on that service, and iCare really drove hard with that. So just to dig in quickly to what the architecture looks like, you'll find with the MuleSoft presentations is a bit more technical than the, the Salesforce ones. Um, as you would expect, Salesforce is, is key across the customer relationship management. Um, the servicing element is in the workflow, but also the uh, customer portal uh, is obviously built on top of communities. It does provide a single view of the customer, whether the, the interaction is, is via the portal, the customer contact center, or through B2B connections. And as I said before, Guidewire was selected um, as the number two SaaS implementation globally. Um, of course, you know, at the time of approval, they've got to get money out, so they also interface with, with financial institutions for payments. But, my, but MuleSoft was selected as the integration platform. More specifically, uh, MuleSoft was selected so they could leverage CloudHub. Does anyone know what CloudHub is here today? And Muleys can't answer. Okay, I've got, a, I've got a fresh audience. So CloudHub is effectively the software as a service offering of MuleSoft. It's our implementation of the MuleSoft endpoint platform in the cloud that you can leverage as a SaaS-based service. Um, the MuleSoft runtime that is the brains underneath this, that there's a lot of smart people in San Francisco you know, developing and evolving uh, each day. Um, the runtime can run anyway. It can run on your premises if required. It can run in your own um, AWS or Azure type data centers, but also it can be leveraged off our Cloud Hub um, environment. And really your applications can be deployed anywhere seamlessly because it is the same runtime. So iCare, we're really keen to leverage this. There was no setup costs. You know, it's not quite credit card being a, a, an enterprise customer, but it was readily available uh, once we signed the contracts. Um, iCare were also well positioned with their technology set up to leverage Cloud Hub quickly using their continuous integration pipelines. Uh, and Stuart Bremner, the uh, then CIO at um, iCare, realized that Cloud Hub was really going to provide in the connectivity fabric to establish the application network for iCare. What was important for Stuart, as he had this principle of using SaaS based applications, he wouldn't get any operational insight into what's happening inside that node. When you're talking to the Salesforce APIs or you're talking to the Westpac APIs or to the SaaS APIs, you make a request, you wait a period of time and you get a response back. There's no insight to what's happening inside. So it's really the, 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 the legs or the, uh, the connections on the application network that gave iCare their operational plane to basically ensure that the NIST platform was operational every day and was meeting the needs of their business. Um, there's a couple of the reasons that iCare went with CloudHub. Um, there was a great 
this great trust across New South Wales government with regard to the platform. We've done some great work already today with Service New South Wales. And Will Bosner at 2 o'clock in the keynote over in uh, Breakout E will be talking more about that. Um, but also, it met the availability and support requirements, um, as you would expect, of New South Wales government. So what was at the heart of iCare's solution? The customer experience was absolutely critical. And again, as I keep repeating, it's the injured worker experience. So they really wanted to be empathetic and understand where the worker was at that point of claim. They wanted to use machine learning um, technologies to get that worker back to work quickly, because we know once it gets to 45 days, their chances drop below 50%. So what they did is they, pro when, they when claims are submitted, they profile them into five buckets. Um, and they're not quite readable on this slide. And, and at the bottom, they are empower. Empower the injured worker with either the wage um, income support they need or a, a medical rehabilitation program. Pre-approve it. Have the person go through what's needed to get them back to work. As we move up these levels, which go from empower to guide, guide the, the worker, support, so that may be getting some actual physio sessions set up, um, or open to specialize or the top actual care programs. When someone's had a serious injury at work and maybe they're in a hospital bed or at home and unable to really function in day-to-day -day life, they don't really want to see the claim form in the post and they don't really want to be directed to a website to fill out a claim form. So what I care have done is by automatically proving the more higher volume, low risk claims at the bottom, yes, they have you know, analytics that follow later to detect maybe some fraudulent activity and, and process that, they can send an eye care worker to the person's location, whether it be in hospital, whether it be at home, and effectively fill their application form out for them. Be really empathetic and really meet the needs of that customer because they've, they've apportioned their resources uh, effectively. And fundamentally, there's no forms for those workers. So, all looks good, right? I care. They had a strategy, they had an architecture, they had really good selection of technologies, all was looking good. They were 18 months into a three-year program. Six months out from their first market commitment, the three-year program had the previous insurers in market stepping away at stage dates. There were six months to go to the market commitment of January last year. And Stuart got an estimate on his desk. We've got 12 months left of work. So there was obviously a few you know, whiteboard uh, markers thrown around. Um, and there was just no um, option of not meeting the deadline. So Stuart made a really bold decision. He dissolved the CIO role and he took up the program lead um, position. It was like, the CIO role doesn't exist if we can't make this program go live. And he then sat down with the team and said, right, what can we do to meet the market commitment? Missing the commitment is not, not um, viable. So they needed a solution. So Stuart made the second bold decision. Let's implement a 20-year-old technology. We've got a greenfield solution. A team of 200 people were loving it being greenfield, and they decided to implement a 20-year-old technology. Everyone was ecstatic, everyone. Truly. Okay, maybe they weren't. But Stuart wanted to do this in a way that would minimize regretful spend in the future. So the team sat down and looked how they could retrospectively apply an API, an event-enabled integration uh, pattern, to the old, effectively database-driven solution. So they uh, wrapped the EML solution with APIs and event-driven architecture, and they integrated into what they had managed to achieve per the target architecture in the same way so not having to go re-architecture and re-implement those solutions. Remember, they only had six months left. So they got through that, they delivered over 200 integration points, connecting 36 different systems. It's no, no irony, 36 systems. Um, and they met their market commitment of 1st of January last year. So as of 1st of January last year, iCare were issuing new policies on old technology and met the market commitment. How did they do this? Um, I care at this stage were really expertly led by Deloitte and through the leadership of Andy Evans and Alec Mishra, they did follow our API-led connectivity approach. Um, Alec has a different style of picture. He's a real good cartoonist, as you can see. But what's really important here is Deloitte and iCare took our recommended architecture approach internally to iCare and made it resonate with their stakeholders. The common language in insurance is they talk about domains. You know, is it claims, is it policies, is it you know, payments, et cetera. So they mapped the API-led connectivity architecture into what would resonate with the customer. That got a lot of buy-in across different stakeholders and enabled them to move forward, fundamentally knowing it was the right architecture to follow. So you can see that Deloitte do have the three levels of architecture here with system, domain, and experience. Um, this is obviously the reference model, and I'll only do this once a day. They did go and implement this at midterm across 20 different systems. 
So this architecture starts to not get very drawable on a screen. But they got there. Just a couple of weeks ago, um, ICANN met their, met their final market commitment of their three-year program. It was a little behind schedule, but given what they'd gone through, I think it was entirely be, uh, within normal ranges. So a couple of weeks ago, iCare went live. Over 800 iCare staff now are using the NIST platform. Um, and in the first two weeks alone, this, the, the platform processed 10,000 claims. Um, and critically, and what I love about this story, is they did unpatch that EML solution from uh, the implementation with minimal impact to go live. Yes, there was parts of the change program that had to do that work, but there was no significant delay in the program or additional significant spend to do that. So that, that strategy of Stuart early to minimize the regretful spend did actually come to fruition. They've delivered another uh, further 130 interfaces into the solution and a, another 40 APIs. So okay, the next slide is not that diagram drawn out. But what I care are positioned with now is a lot of APIs that they've already reused today for delivering on their two deliverables, and they've now got a foundation to be able to leverage that capability to build the evolution. So I care now have built, done their build stage, and now they'll move into the operate stage as an organization, and they've got roadmap to, to, to bring in new functionality, and they'll be able to access and leverage these core systems that are already in the application network. A term that we used a lot at ICANN in the early days was walled gardens. So because they wanted that software as a service uh, principle, Stuart didn't want to build a walled garden. He didn't want to have a data center where all his infrastructure assets and all his software assets are inside it, and it's protected, and we have to punch connectivity holes between it. Stuart wanted to realize the application network. And we've, in the three years at iCare, we have done that. And now they're going to leverage and move forward from there. So the application network is a concept that, that MuleSoft talk frequently about, and we see across all our customers the evolution in achieving this and driving the success. We heard before on um, the ASICs video, if, if you saw that before, the rate of uh, speed. We, we see in, a lot of, in most customers, on average, 64% increase in API delivery uh, time using the Anypoint platform. When we start getting to reuse, the cost of ownership drops down. So we see five times faster project delivery by getting the reuse um, and delivering on the projects. And we see also the application network as the fundamental connectivity platform that under sits, under, is underneath the customer success platform. So this is our architecture um, or marketing architecture diagram um, at Salesforce. And it really brings together the, the customer at the center and all the tools the trailblazers have got to enable the connected customer experience that, uh, all our customers. And the, the MuleSoft platform is, as you heard before, called the Anypoint platform. It is the most advanced enterprise platform for creating, managing, and deploying APIs and integrations on the cloud or on your own premises. And it really is the connectivity layer that delivers truly connected experiences. We believe it covers a wide range of use cases. This is just a selection which might resonate with a number in the audience. So whether it be you know, creating a microservices architecture, or having a published subscriber architecture, or having batch uploads between suppliers and the different systems, or doing API management. Bill talked about before, creating APIs then has the necessity of managing them. The Anypoint platform is there to meet your need, and it really is the only platform in market that's been built from the ground up to have this vision and support it. We know this because we've demonstrated and proven it across over 1,200 customers globally. We have a rich array of use cases that being in customer success, I get to leverage and, and talk to my customers about and bring those learnings. And also a lot of experience at different sides of organizations in implementing on our API-led connectivity um, architecture. So you can see my Mueller t-shirt. There's a lot of Mueller's here today. It's our first world tour, so be kind to us. Uh, there's a big group of us around the back in the campground. They'll be happy to answer any questions you have today. And also at 2 o'clock over in Campground E, uh, Will Bosner will be doing the integration keynote. And he's going to dig in further on the Service New South Wales um, case study or, or example that we've achieved there. And with that, I'll say thank you.